today's project is we're gonna get out there we're gonna the kids are gonna group up and they're gonna clean the cages right now the cages is covered in a, a limu that usually is abundant when it starts raining and the water turns brown and stuff this season we got dirty lichens Welcome to Tamba TV. Tamba TV. Tamba TV. Join us while we go on this wild ride on the corner. All right. Aloha and welcome to Tin. Uh, Aloha and welcome to Tamba TV. I am Tintin Pule, your host. We're here with the program director of this Lima project down in Anohola. Nalani Kaneakua. Aloha. I'm Nalani Kaneakua and I'm the project director for this project called Koalao Limu Project. It's a restoration replenish project. And the Limu we're featuring is Limu Manuel. She goes wild over here. No more. This is my other partner, my other project uh, director. This is Lei Wan. Aloha. I'm Lei Wan. I'm originally from Haena, Limuoli Kauai. I grew up following this woman's tale um, and having her as a mentor in the sea. And together we have reestablished her father's Limu project, a Koala Limu project. Uh, her dad started this project nearly 30 years ago. And we are simply just carrying on the tradition. Part of what we do here is practice and tradition. It's not just about growing limo and restoring limo, it's about keeping the practice alive. Okay, let's see what this limo project has to offer and uh, we're going to cover this story today and have fun. Main thing is, it's all for the children, restoration program for the KTO of Kauai. This season we got dirty lichens. Uh, a lot of the cages ended up on the shore with the north swell, uh, south swell. Two weeks ago we had direct east and it was like 15 feet, so a lot of the cages have been up on the shore, the wind, the sun, burnt them down. They were resilient, so they revived and decided to grow again. So we we'll, we'll probably get a better summer, but once we get it, the cage is clean, it'll allow uh, the sun to come in and, and the limo to grow. Okay. Awesome. Okay. okay. what is happening with the land by looking in the water. We don't need some scientists or some bi marine biologists to tell us what is happening. The seaweeds will tell us. So there is seaweed that appears every so often. They're always there. Seaweed, the brown being the oldest from the beginning, the creation. And uh, some limo will come out when the ocean lacks calcium. Some limo will disappear where there's no fresh water in the area. Uh, we have a stream, a stream right down there. So when it's open and it flows into the sea, it helps feed the limo. When we don't think that the limo, we know that the stream is blocked. So it's so important that we keep all our, our watersheds, our, our streams, our rivers open and flowing. Yeah. We have a big thing here about um, uh, water diversion. People in the upland, they take the water. And it's usually people that, uh, that are not familiar with the cultural practices, whereas we depend on the fresh water. Because the ocean needs fresh water. It needs that balance to, for everything to, to survive. 
all our things are jammed for whatever reason, whether it's development, urban development, um, sea levels are rising, that happened in king tides. I never saw king tides growing up, you know. All these things is causing blockage. Blockage against us, uh, damming the sand that uh, the streams cannot flow anymore. So, so yeah, it's a, it's, it's a hard call, but we just come out here and we do the best we can. You know, we get the kids out and they have fun and, you know, if we end up with one kid going to be somebody that will uh, protect our seas, then then we win all around for us. Oh, that's a lot. This is related to the family. Oh, look at that. Wow. See the crab. Oh, I got one. Oh, I fell out. I got one. Oh, I'm a crab. <laughs> oh, that was inside of in the key. Oh, one more. Call him up for uncle. There is this rock in there that is called CTA. In the ocean, there's a lot of them. Um, they kind of all clustered together. They're like this reddish, purplish kind of rocks. The the you could pull them together and hide oh, in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You see the the hey, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that uh, CCA that is like the glue of the sea. It's an algae. So we experimenting in this one by putting some vavaiole, which is the green uh, rock feet. I think a little bit translate to. And one CCA uh, rock in there. Hopefully it attaches itself. And you know we we just gotta watch uh, the growth on it. Yeah, it's easy. If it attached itself to the CCA, then how nice! Hey, as you get warm, come around the food. Auntie and I are gonna explain as we cooking. Now this recipe I shared with you guys is one of my signature recipes for Kepi Aina Garden Island um, uh, savage business. So. I better not see you guys making them and posting them on Facebook or Facebook. <laughs> <or Maryland. laughs> Gotta tell out the recipe. So we're just gonna try to slap these together. We're gonna to add, um, we're gonna make um, the poke with the the ia using kalo. We add green onions. I like cilantro in my poke. I don't know about you guys, oh, yeah. but over here you go, you don't get to say ill. When, when something is prepared for you, you can do that at home, but not here. We always say you don't have to have fish to make poke. What is this one? Dinamona. Yeah. Would it be a considered a fish? Yeah. 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 Anything that goes with koi. My uh, mo'opuna wahine, her first food is koi. I remember, I remember my first food was poi, and I remember my tutu feeding me the poi. So Same here. I always gonna remember my tutu when I eat poi, even in my old age. I can see her face. I remember a little boy uh, eating poi, and adding brown sugar to it, oh. and getting dirty liquids from grandma <laughs> because you're not supposed to mess around with the poi. Right. The poi is the and the way she like them, she like the sour poi. Oh, that's why you got. So that's why, yeah, we gotta put sugar. I prefer again to stay with ingredients that keep me reminding me of my ancestors yeah and which limo Kohu. did you gather Kohu, Kohu yeah Kohu. Kohu means what in Hawaiian Kohu. Kohu like I choose you you I choose you ah. I Kohu you it means the chosen one yeah so the chosen limu which your families here in Ko'olau were famous for gathering Oh, we're going to chop this very up and we're going to add them. Limukohu. Limukohu. Um, this, we're going to make them a little bit hot so you guys eat slow. <laughs> and this is, uh, you guys probably familiar with sweet Thai chili on the market. This is sweet Hawaiian chili. I make my own. And inside wow. is the seaweed called Aki Aki. Replenishing the reefs by re or by restoring the limu. Absolutely. And it gives the kids a great yeah. um, opportunity to Absolutely. learn about the yeah. stuff. It's so important that we malama the life of the sea because once the sea is gone, the sea is dead, which we start to see some places like normal fish, the reef look barren. We need and so you can you can bring life back to that area. A lot of things these kids um, are asked to watch and look around them, which includes the, the conditions, the clouds, the rain, the wind, the birds. They're asked to observe all of that. 
and at the end of the session we just sit around and share and some of the things the kids observe I might not see it you know so it's it's a it's a big I would say it's this, this huge big laboratory for the kids to um, it's not just the limos so it's, it's it's everything around us yeah which is what the project started off uh, 30 years ago uh, my dad realized that the limo was disappearing and this area had so much new limo on uh, Manoa it's a deep sea limo and he's so he, you know they were talking and then uh, he said hey maybe we should try and grow limo try and grow the limo back in this area so that's where it all started growing the limo 30 years ago to now where we have 14 by 14 inch cubicles they're non-invasive um, we use uh, nylon roll we, so they don't release any kind of sediments the, the line doesn't fray or, or all these little particles and we use cement blocks it rubber holes you know like so it doesn't fray the rope around that and we're not attaching anything to the reef so we're not hurting the reef and we're not polluting and we're creating this awesome environment for other sea creatures to move in. Aloha, and we want to thank you guys so much for coming out here and joining us today and participating in our uh, Koalao Limu uh, restoration project. We are so grateful for the generosity of Tamba and his crew for the rash guards, and these kids are so stoked. They're gonna walk away with a bunch of stickers. So I give me one of mahalo, you guys, so much for coming out here. Tamba TV.